It's Bob A, and we back. Welcome back to the Purpose in the Youth podcast. Today on the show, we have Whitney Bazil. How are you doing today? Hi, thank you. I'm great. Are you, exi- are you excited to be here? Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> what? I'm super excited. I've actually been wanting to do this. I, I just didn't know how to come about it. Yeah. So I'm glad you hit me up. And I mean, like, I said, like we were talking about before we started this podcast was I we had been like watching each other for some time now. Um, and when I first got out here, I started to just even just scroll through my Instagram of like who I was following. Cause I try to just follow people to like when I, I'm like, Oh, this somebody want to get on the podcast. The time isn't right, but let's just like sit on it. And you were somebody that came across and, um, it's really cool to see what you're doing. And I'm Thank very you. excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much. So people, for people that are listening right now may not know who you are. Who is Whitney today and how young is she? Well, as we all know, my name is Whitney Bazil. Um, I'm 20 years old. I'm about to be 21 in like four days. Oh, four, oh it's four days? Yeah, oh, it's man. on the 25th. So, okay. Um, I've never really um, celebrated a birthday, so I think I'm super excited. That's awesome. Yeah. You gotta, I think you might have to celebrate this one just a little I bit. Know, I feel like it too because I've been working so hard and just, you know, yeah. going through it. So why not? You know? I mean, you've been in LA eight months now, right? Yeah, eight months. I think this is. A, I think if there's one to celebrate, this might be the one. Yeah. Even if it's sitting on the beach, just relax just and just and just, just uh, a day to yourself. Just a drink. Yeah, you know, you might have to. Yeah. Where did you grow up? Um. Well, I was born in Haiti. Born in Haiti. Yes. Um. I moved to the U.S. when I was twelve. Okay. But I moved to Worcester. Okay. And then from there, I actually moved to Atlanta for a year last year. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's such a challenge. I was going to say, that's you've been jumping around jumping, a little bit. Yeah, it's crazy, but um, I ended up moving back to Worcester. Um, after Atlanta? Yeah, after Atlanta, because um, my friends had hit me up about a movie, The Rare, mm-hmm. and um, I thought it was a pretty dope idea, so I just moved back, and from there... Um, I ended up moving to um, California. California, now where yeah. you reside. What was life like growing up in Haiti? What's that environment like? Because it's definitely much <laughs> different than the U.S. Oh my God, growing up in Haiti is so different. Um, just the lifestyle, you know? Because, I don't know, people, um, I think um, us over here, we're very grateful. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, people in Haiti are very grateful too, you mm-hmm. know, but, um, I just feel like we have so much out here and growing up in Haiti, um, it was such a different feel, you know, um, um, for example, you know how you wake up out here and, um, you have plans, you know, you, um, you want to go out, you know, you have a shoot, you have this, you know, this show to go to and you, um, I mean, back home, it's, like, really different because when you wake up, it's about, okay, I need to get up, I, you know, I need to survive, I need to, you know, like, why can't I eat, you know what I mean, like, things like that, so um, <clears throat> I feel like that's um, that's what's really different about it, um, you know, people out here, like, you know, we wake up and we want to go out and do things, you know, but um, we get it way easier, you know, yeah. so that's, I try, yeah. I try to like remind myself that a lot, even, you know, especially with a lot of like the hurricanes that are going on oh, yeah, in Puerto definitely. Rico and you see like the damage is being done to these places where they don't even have a house to live in. They don't even have food. Yeah, it's a lot. Like yeah. who am I to come to either complain or be mad about what I'm doing today? Like, you know what I mean? Like you said, like we wake up and we worry about going to a shoot or sometimes we're not. We're not getting the jobs that we want or the, oh, the yeah, opportunities, yeah. but then you look at people like that who don't even have the opportunity. Yeah. I, I swear, it's like if you can get it's, that perspective. It's literally about surviving. You know, yeah. you know, we all got to survive, but that's literally the mentality you have when you wake up. Yeah. Oh, shit, what am I going to do today? Yeah. What's, you know, what's next? But um, out here, um, you know, when I moved, I was very young in a way, but... I still got to learn a lot about home. So um, I just had to adjust myself and just, you know, I had to learn a lot. So I just kind of, you know, got used to this lifestyle and just kind of used some of my old background Mm -hmm. and just, you know, 
mix them up and just make it work right just, yeah what was one of like the hardest but best lessons you learned growing up best lesson oh my god i'll tell you a story um i remember growing up in haiti that's oh, oh my god okay so um my father always takes me to school and he always picks me up after school and um i remember um after school one day he came to pick me up and um you know haiti is haiti is beautiful haiti you know, Haiti is just another world. Like it's a whole another world. You got, you really gotta know how to survive to be in Haiti. Like you really gotta be about this lifestyle. So um, I remember after school, um, he's picking me up, and something had happened. Um, some guy on a motorcycle literally ran through and shot some other guy, and from there I just ran home. You know, I just literally. I didn't think twice of it. I just left my dad and I ran home. And I remember when I got back home, um, he didn't show up until hours later. And when I got back, like he didn't talk to me for days, literally did not talk to me. And I'm just like, you know, like what the hell, what's going on? And then, you know, um, and that's actually the biggest lesson I've learned because um, I, you know, I was wondering why and then when he finally spoke to me, he was just like, you never run, you know, you never run from anything. You don't run from the bullshit. You don't run from, you know, like you, you just don't run because once you run, um, you show them that you're scared, you know, and, and you should never be scared of anything that, you know, that comes close to you or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you should just face it and that's it. You face it, you move on, mind your business and that's it, you yeah. know? But um, I feel like that's literally the biggest lesson because um, till today I'm still, you know, taking that with me everywhere I go. So yeah. it's just, it's it's one of those lessons that you can translate to anything that yeah. you're kind of walking into with your life now. Like oh, yeah. if it's a and um, you know, it's like um, you know, it's things that people are very um afraid to speak of. You know, um, people are very afraid to speak of the things that happen, the things that are going on right now. And that's something that I'm not afraid of because, you know, I've seen so much, you know, I've seen it, I've been through it. So it's like when, you know, like when, when um, let's say I do some interview and the questions um, they ask me, you know, my answers are always going to be deep or, or, you know, way ahead because that's really yeah. the things that, you know, but um yeah. I think it's I think it's important to be authentic and be real and not beat around the bush. Like you said with interviews, yeah. you know, I could sit here all day with this podcast and ask you very generic questions. Why do you do this? Why what happened when you were doing this? But what's the point? You know what I mean? Like what's be real? Like let's get honest. And that's why even before we started the podcast, I told you like be as comfortable as you want because as far as you want to go, I want to go there too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I really want to I want this to be valuable to not only the list the listeners, yes, but more so the person that is coming on to this podcast because you're taking time out of your day where you could be doing a lot of different other things. Uh, and I appreciate and, and I have so much respect for the people oh that God. give me that yeah, chance uh, to actually come on here. But I think it is important to, to be real and to be honest with people and, and not try to glamorize everything and be, you know, we all are all human beings oh, yeah, that definitely. have our own struggles and our own things that we're going through. So it's like, Let's just get, let's get right yeah, to it, why you know? Not, you know, why not talk about that? Exactly, exactly. Looking back, is there a moment that you wish you could relive or maybe one to, like, a moment to make a different decision, <laughs> you know, moving to Worcester and then moving to Atlanta, would you, hmm. you know, something like that? Um, I always say that if I could go back and not move to Atlanta, mm -hmm. I would, only because um, I had made Easy Season 3, which was the season Kanye dropped his album. Wow. And yeah, so... You moved I, to Atlanta for that, for Yeezy? No, okay, no. so uh, it's such a... Okay, it's you don't, have, you don't have, if it's not something you want to go into, you can just, just no, summarize, you know summarize it. I'll make it short. Um, so I had a shoot in New York, and I took the bus from Atlanta to New York. And then, yeah, I did the shoot, and then around the time I seen the casting on Twitter. So I just went to the casting, and that was actually my first, you know, like, um, you know, runway type of show. So um, I just went and 
not that I wasn't thinking that I would make it, but it wasn't, you know, in my mind, like, oh, yeah, wouldn't it? You should stay in New York, you know, this and that. So um, after that, I just went back to Atlanta. And then um, Kanye called me the day before the show around, like, 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> Kanye called you? Well, Like I, somebody on his yes, team? Okay, yeah. I don't know. Maybe he, oh my God. he's the type <laughs> of person that maybe <laughs> would be like, I'm calling them I'm up. Calling, yeah. Oh, my God, imagine. But, no, um, um, his team called me and they emailed me. And um, they told me to be in New York by 6. So I was just like, all right. So, um, okay, let's see how we're going to do this. So I tried <laughs> finding flights, and I couldn't. And it just didn't work out. But I didn't give up, though. I went back. Um, well, when I went back to Boston, I ended up making use this season four. So I didn't really regret it because, you know, I still had to go to what I had to go to. So. Something happened. You, and you know still got I mean? that opportunity. Yeah. You know, and, and I still did it. So. Wow. Yeah, it that, was, mu- that must have been amazing then. It was because the second time I went there already, I was just like, okay, if I did it the first time, I can do it the second time. Mm-hmm. So I went there already. And what's crazy is um, um, that, okay, that's a story too. So um, when I went back to Boston, I ended up getting a car, which is, you know, crazy. Mm-hmm. So I got a car and then um, I seen another tweet, you know? So I I just took my car, I drove to New York, and then I remember trying to find parking, I couldn't. <laughs> and then, you know, I couldn't. And the line was getting bigger and bigger each time. So when I finally did, um, I remember standing in the line and I always tell people, if you go to a casting and if you really want it, you, you make it work. You get to that door. You know yeah. what I mean? You don't just waste your time talking to the other model because at the end of the day, you both want it. You know? So if you got to make it to the door before she does or before he does, you do it. You yeah. know? So I remember just um, standing in the line and seeing at least like 6,000 something girls. In the, yeah, it was. But at the time, it was only females. You know, so just so many girls and, you know, beautiful girls, you know, just different, you know, races, different everything, uh, everything. It was beautiful. So, um, so I remember just standing there wondering, like, uh -uh, I'm I'm just not going to, you know, stay here and wait for the line to move. So I remember every pretty girl I seen walked up to them. Hey, you really pretty. What's good? Like, nice to meet you. This and that. Had a quick conversation, moved on to, you know, to the other beautiful girl, you know, everything. And then, which is crazy because by the time I made it to the middle of the line, I seen my friends from Worcester. They were just walking around, you know, um, New York. So um, I called them over. You know, <laughs> it's crazy because um, I actually told them, I was like, hey, act like I'm famous. So they acted like I was famous. <laughs> <laughs> they um <laughs> they totally played you know my stylist and everything and then they walked me to the front of the line and then from there uh, the guy that was at the door last year seen me with my fro and then he was just like fro girl get in here so um, that's how I got so it so you skipped the entire line I skipped the line <laughs> Yeah, I skipped the whole line. And then when I walked upstairs, guess who walked in front of me? Kanye. I was just like, you know what? Never wow. give up. Never. It's crazy, yeah. That is that is so smart that you had your friends play I, that role. <laughs> it really is perception. Dude, just acting I, like... No, I really had to because um, if I didn't do that, I, I don't think I would have you know made it to the line because... Obviously, they don't have enough time in one day to see six thousand people, so no, the doors eventually then, the doors eventually close. After, um, I think after me, they probably had like ten people in, and then after that, that was it. Casting was over. Yeah, wow. so I got in at the right time. Oh my god! And then um, when I walked in, um, yeah, I think from there I just had it. That's you know, I, I you know I always tell myself. Um, once I get to the door, 99.9% percent i am going make it, you know, cause I have to. You have to. There's no, there's no option B, there's, there's no nothing. nothing, you know, it's like, I did not come here to just go back, you know, so it's like, I came here for a reason, so I really gotta show, you know, the client who I am and what I'm, you know what I mean? So it's like, 
that, you know, that's really how I go about it. When did you realize you had this this passion for modeling? Was there a certain moment or? Um, you know, um, even back home in Haiti, people used to call me the man can. It's you know, it's crazy. But um, moving to the U.S., um, I started um, creating. I'll say when I was 16. Okay. But um, I was actually going to a lot at the time. So going to a lot and um, I just had to find my purpose, you know. So um, from there, I just started doing what I wanted. And I didn't care what other people thought of me. I mm-hmm. didn't, you know. And, and I, you know, since then, I just never stopped, you know. It's like an everyday thing. Um, I just love it so much, you know. I get to express myself how I want. I get to do what I love. I get to meet the most amazing people ever. I get to just, you know, and um, it's crazy because half of the places that I've, you know, been to, mentions, um, you know, deserts, um, you know, just like, you know, vibes, you know what I mean? I, and um, I truly feel like I wouldn't have been able to do those things if it wasn't for creating. So, um it's really been putting me to a lot and um it's been no it's been a struggle because if you really have a dream if you really have something you really want to do and you love you really got to be able to move you you got to be able to give up friendships you got to be able to give up you know lifestyles and everything because if you don't you know you're you're really gonna get pulled back so um yeah you just gotta keep on moving forward and be the best at what you do and always, you know, always keep it moving. Yeah. That's how I, you know, that's how I see it. And when you follow the passion, you get to travel to these places. And oh, yeah. I, it's, it's unbelievable how other doors kind of open when you oh, finally start to follow that passion. And you, nobody can pinpoint exactly you know, what's going to happen until you know, it already happens. You know, that's crazy. Um, I moved to LA mm-hmm. and um, it's, it's been really cool, but um, people always find it funny or or cute in a way but weird because um you know it's like i take the bus everywhere you know i take the train i'm not gonna waste money on uber mm-hmm. who does that mm-hmm. you know plus i i don't know i got in trouble with uber too so. uh-oh uh-oh kind of <laughs> kind of i'm an uber driver uh, out here so are you yeah. really oh you better watch. I'm, I'm gonna keep my eye out for you. No, you low key gotta help me out because I need my account back. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. But, um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, I take the bus and I take the train, you know, things like that. And, you know, it it really helps. And I I truly wish, you know, other kids like me will do the same because you really get to see a lot. You get to see people, you get to see um, lifestyles, you get to see, you know, just how the, you know, like how you know, places are, you know, just, just, you know, just the view and everything, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like views, you know, just vibes. So I just wish, um, you know, the youth will really just, you know, don't waste money on Uber because if you can really do that, do it. But long story short, um, you know, I always find it really cool when I leave the hood and I end up at some fancy shoot. And I'm just like, wow, how the hell did I end up here? Like, you know, and you know, it's you know, it's really crazy because half of the time I don't even know where I'm going. I just know I have a shoot and I get there. And when I'm there, I'm just looking, I'm like, Oh shit, okay, this is you know what I mean? Yeah. Like this looks like nothing like where I came from, came you know from. what I mean? So it's like um it's really, really because I get to see both lifestyle and you know, and I'm very humble. Mm-hmm. And um that's something that, that, you know, I don't take for granted at all, you know. So it's like I take the bus and I get to where I need to go and I see beautiful things. Yeah, and it know? keeps you grounded, too, when oh, you're yeah. seeing both sides of the spectrum and then you're walking into these huge shoots with, with huge production you know crews. And Let me give you an example. So I came from the hood and um, I took the bus and I ended up shaking hands with Russell Simmons. I'm just like, you know what, it's, wow. yeah, it, you know, it was crazy, and, you know, it's just, everything I do really pushes me to do the next thing, you know, and yeah. I'm just like, wow, if I can do that, then I can do this, you know, yeah. so, and, but, um, I just really hope, um, you know, when I do things that, you know, it really pushes me to do better, and I really hope that it, you know, it truly helps, you know, other people to, to just, you know, you know, kind of see like, 
it's not easy but if i can do it you can definitely do it and you can you know definitely push through so it's you know it's not you know it's not something you can just give up on there's no giving up because this lifestyle can be beautiful if you make it you know yeah. so, um, when, when you were first starting off obviously you know it's hard to get these gigs because you don't have the resume of she's done x y and z shoes she's done this and that Dude, i just got my portfolio yesterday You're, yeah that was your I, <laughs> I haven't had a portfolio. I, I've been creating since I was 16. And yesterday, I finally had a book portfolio in my hand. And I actually went to a casting yesterday. And just holding it, I was just like, wow, I actually have my book in my hand. So I people know. were booking you just based Book, when you were showing yeah. up? Just the I way got you... signed with a, a portfolio and everything. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. I I didn't I would, did not think that would be possible unless you had a, that's what you always a, hear is they have to have a portfolio, a portfolio whether a photographer a model a card, you know, anything. That, yeah, I just got mine and um you know the reason why I even did my portfolio you know I've been wanting to but I'm just very picky you know because I create so much and I truly feel like people get different vibes from me. Mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna build a portfolio, it's you know it really gotta be you know it has to capture off everything. the hook you know. So um, I just wasn't really ready for that. So um, well not I wasn't ready, but I just wanted it to be perfect. You know, one, you know what I mean. So yeah. um, especially if you're gonna be presenting people, yeah, you need you know? to feel very confident of what you're yeah. handing them. So when I went to my casting yesterday and having that. Oh, you know, I felt very, you know, I yeah. felt very happy because yeah. I didn't have that when I was in Boston. No. So, yeah. So talk to me about the move to LA then. Um, the move to was LA. Was it easy at first? I mean, we're going one coast to the other. I'm, I'm the new kid around the block, so I'm, here to hear, I'm curious right. to hear you your know, perspective on it. I did. Okay, I got you. So um, moving to LA was very weird because um, it's not something I had planned, you know? Um so the tour was happening mm -hmm. you know we um we funded for the bus things like that and but myself i'm you know i'm always on the move you know mm -hmm. so when i went back to boston i knew i couldn't stay in boston i knew i didn't want to get an apartment i knew i didn't want to you know just live there so i needed to bounce so when the tour was you know happening um around the time i had met a girl which is very funny but um, I had met a girl, okay. and then um, I met her through a friend, Denzel. Um, he's um, he's a shooter too. Well, I I call all my friend photographers shooters, shooters yep. you know. So um, he's a shooter too, and um, so I met him. Well, I met her through him, and um, I actually met her in November. So that that's not even a you know a long not time too long ago. Yeah. So I met her in November, and then I ended up. Okay, so she actually lives in Cali, but she um, she was born in Worcester. And um, I've never met her before. I just met her when she came back, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, when she was back, um, you know, she, like, she just fucked with my vibe, you know? She thought I was cool. I thought she was cool, too. And then she ended up moving back to Cali. And then... Um, I ended up making Vogue, which is crazy. So no big I deal. Made, <laughs> no big deal. It's so weird. So I ended up making Vogue, and then um, I post. Well, no. Well, yeah. Actually, I made Vogue, and then it was on Facebook, mm -hmm. and then she seen it. She messaged me like, "Yeah, you you dope as fuck. You sh you shouldn't be in Worcester. You should move to Cali. This is not your vibe. Cali's your vibe. Just you know what I mean." <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like, "Damn, you know." I kind of blushed it off because I didn't really know her. Yeah. And then she messaged me again. So I'm just like, all right. So, um, you know, God is good. And, you know, and that's something that, you know, like you really got to pray. You really got to have that faith because if you don't, you know, it's like you're going to take yourself nowhere. You really got to believe in yourself and just know, you know, taking a jump or like what, you know, like whatever the, the hell you got to do to just make it. You you know like you really gotta do it like in the smartest way, but still take that jump. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, so um, yeah, she messaged me and I was just like, all right. So you know, God is good because this happened around December. So I was looking at flights and flights were like eight hundred something dollars. 
And um, from there, I just, you know, I just couldn't. I was just like, damn. And at some point, there was this one flight that was 186. <laughs> Imagine a flight from Boston to LA. 186. So, yeah. so I just took that and I told myself, even if I don't take the flight, I'm not going to regret it because flights were like 900 something dollars, 800. So mm -hmm. why not, you know, take the risk. So um, I didn't buy the flight because I really thought I was going to move to LA like that. I just needed to move because so much house was going on, you know? So I just took the flight and then um, on the 10th of January, I remember um, the tour was going to come to L well, well, not come to LA, but they were going to leave Worcester around the 14th and it was the 10th. And I remember my flight date and everything, the time and I just woke up and I remember not even wanting, you know, to go on the tour and I just packed up my bag, everything. You got on, and and you I got just, on the flight. Yeah. But what's crazy is I, you know, I, I didn't plan it, you know. Um, I moved out here with, with literally one hundred dollars in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I moved with one fifty, but oh. at the airport they took money off. They took fifty. They took money they from. They took fifty dollars off oh. for my baggage. So from Bo Boston did or LAX did. <laughs> Boston. To, Boston did. Boston they did took your money. Yeah. So I was really hurt because I really didn't have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when I moved out of here, I really moved out of here with one hundred dollars in my pocket. So from there, I just had to really grind and get it all started again. That is incredible. Yeah. So you made it work. I mean, I feel like sometimes when you put yourself into those positions of there's now I'm in LA, I have a hundred dollars in my pocket. You things you figure things out pretty quickly because there's not yeah. there's no time to sit back and relax i'll get to it tomorrow i'll, I'll oh, no. find a way it's like i need to figure this out right oh, now yeah you know um i couldn't sleep you know it's like i'm in la but i couldn't sleep because i knew i was here for something i wasn't just here you know just to be here so every day i will wake up every day i will want to do something and um you know e um eventually things you know just you know Sometimes when you don't, you know, like friendships don't, you, you know, usually work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you just got to like drop certain people and just move on with, you know, whatever you got to do. So I just had to do that. And then from there, I just started branding myself out and just meeting different people. Um, and also, too, I think from building a portfolio, well, not see, I've never had a portfolio in hand, but from building on Instagram and like building online, you know, Tumblr. Well, I like, you know, what's crazy. I don't even have a Tumblr, but I have so much, like I have so much on Tumblr. It's crazy. Like content that other Con people have posted yeah. of you. You know, so it's like, you know, it's really dope. And from there, moving to Cali and just messaging somebody wasn't hard because, you know, they could see, you know, like a little tiny vision of what I had. It's to like offer. it is the online portfolio of yeah, what you know? the work you've been doing, and yeah. and it shows a lot of your oh, yeah. history of what you have been doing. So people at least have an idea of like who you are and oh, yeah, the, what what you can do. Oh yeah, but you know, like the the coolest thing I can say is, um, from the start till now, I can still count and still remember everything I've done, and you know what I mean. It's like from, you know, the starting point till wherever it's like i can still remember everything and how it went what did i have to do you know things like that and like i you know i you know i truly believe um you know people sh you know should just go through things because you really learn and it you know it's really like a puzzle you you just gotta put the pieces together and you'll be fine you know so um yeah i could literally remember everything what so. was the first was there like a first gig you got out here that kind of got the thing rolling or you know my first gig i didn't make it you didn't make it <laughs> oh my god it was for stella mccartney and i did not make it and i remember i was in long beach and it was in downtown la and i remember like i said see that's another lesson i learned never use uber if you don't need it <laughs> So I was in Long Beach, and um, I remember um, I had a roommate, and like I said, I didn't have money when I moved to LA, and I had gotten this casting, and I really wanted to go because it's it's 
you know what I mean? It's like the biggest like fashion designer, like Stella McCartney. Come on, like you will, you know. You have to go so, for it. So, so um, somehow my roommate actually was being generous and got me an Uber. So shout out to her. Wow. You know, shout out to her. She got me an Uber, and Uber was expensive. It was like at least seventy dollars from yeah, oh from, from Long, Long Beach, Beach downtown. Yeah, I mean, to downtown. I mean, that makes yeah. sense. That makes so sense. So when I got there, did castings, and I didn't make it. From there, I literally had to learn like my way. You know, I think that's yeah, that's really what taught me how to just move around and not you know do Uber every day. Yeah, because you can't spend seventy dollars just to get to a casting and not even get you it. You know, and like. Um, you know, most people don't know how to budget, and that's the problem. Because me, it's like, I really got to budget. I really got to make it work because if I don't, for example, if I don't get a hairstylist, so I don't get a makeup artist, or, you know, or, you know, or whatever it is, you know, I literally got to get it myself. So it's like, if I spend 70 on Uber, you know what I mean? Like, what's the point? I don't, you know, but... Where else can you save the money? Well, exactly. Yeah. It's like just just do something dope with it, you know. Do something really dope with your money. Invest in yourself, and um, yeah, just don't spend it on dumb shit. Yeah. Because when you forty, you you look back. Yeah. Damn, I should have kept that. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta <laughs> you know, make. So. You have to make use of the resources that are available to you. Yeah. Obviously, you see other people that have either big money or oh, they have yeah. all these big but, opportunities. Oh my but God. Don't get me wrong. If you really got to, you know, go somewhere and you, you know, you got to go to a party or something, you don't drive, you yeah. know, you got to treat yourself nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Things like that. I'll come but, pick you up. I'll you pick know? you up. <laughs> but do not cause shit. When you're starting, when you're at the bottom, you got to really figure your way you, out. You really got to make it work because, yeah. Hot, you know and then especially if you're young too like yeah. this life will knock you out yeah. <laughs> and it's like you know it's it's funny because i'm just learning you know i'm just learning day by day and should be hitting me left and right but at the end of the day i'm just you know i'm you know god is with me and i just know that if he brought me this far he wouldn't just leave me here yeah. so you know so i'm just hoping. you just have to keep going yeah and going patience and, going. and just hard work you know yeah so, yeah. so recently you signed with uh, Factor Chosen LA. Is that the name of the agency? Yes. How has that been working with them? I actually love Factor. I love okay. my agent, Osad. He's super dope. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Shout out to Osad. For, uh, um, Osad actually started messaging me um, even before I was signed. It's okay. That's But this story I have to tell. Okay, so... Um, I had met a friend Barry out here. Shout out to Barry to do photographer. He only shoots film. So only. only shoots film. And um he's um yeah, Barry's dope. He's really young. Okay. Yeah, he just turned twenty. So like all my friends are young, but all my friends are really dope too. But um and um I remember when I met him out here for casting and i think it was for starbucks yeah for starbucks for starbucks oh, yeah cool. which, yeah it was cool so um i met him through that and then a couple of days later he called me yo like i have a shoot for you this and that and you know that's a not a story okay <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so um he hit me up uh, about a shoot and um he ended up giving the director my number things like that and the director called me and it was supposed to be an overnight shoot and Okay, so an overnight shoot, and then I was supposed to stay up, and if they needed a model, I just had to go on set. Mm -hmm. So um, what's crazy is they, they don't usually tell you who the shoot's for unless you make the casting, you know? So They don't you, want to build too much hype yeah, over it. Yeah, you too just much show, hype. Yeah. And I just wish they didn't tell me, you know? So, um, so, um, so yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he told me to stay up, and then as I'm falling asleep, I'm texting him, like, please let me know, because, you know, things like that, and then he hit me up with a text, oh, we're just waiting on Rihanna, I'm like, oh, who, Re, <laughs> Re who, Re who, what, hey, where, like, what's going on, so now I really couldn't sleep, and you know what's crazy, I didn't get the casting, so I didn't get the casting, and I was hurt, like, come on, you know, Rihanna, like, you know, she's, you know, she's everything. So, um, 
What was the opportunity? Were you going to be like a model in like a music video? Yeah, or? Okay. it was. Um, I heard it was the Kendrick and yeah. So, but sh- yo, the video is really dope for that yeah. one though. Yeah. Oh Even, my God. It would have been better if you were in it. Oh my God! Imagine. <laughs> Oh man, but um, so yeah, I ended up not making it, so I was really sad, you know. And the next day, I actually had a casting. The next day, I had the casting for Snoop Dogg in Joy Rich Fashion Show, which is crazy. So I went there, and then oh, um, at the time, I actually seen Jimmy too. Jimmy went to the casting, mm-hmm. things like that. So you know, like we kind of linked up, you know. Um, and then after that, I, you know, I just went to the mall i went to the mall because i just couldn't take it you know i wanted to just give myself something because i was going through so much you know i just last night i didn't make the rihanna casting i was just still hurt you, you know so much, I, yeah. I was just yo, know, i had so much like emotions building up so i needed to get something so i went to get a wig so <laughs> i got my wig and then i got a call oh you made the snoop Dogg enjoy your fashion wow. show wow so from there, I was just like, you know what? God is great. You, yeah. know, you don't get one thing, but something else. Something else is always going to turn so, up. Yeah. So that's how, um, that's, yeah, that was cool. And that fashion show was really dope. Yeah. yeah. So working with AHC only opens up more doors for you. The then. more, yeah. And then now back to the story on how I met my agent. So, um, Medbury casting and then he, um, and then he messaged me about the Rihanna shoot. The, you know, the director, you know, called me and everything. And then from the director, um, I think he gave Assad my pictures and things like that. You know, my number, email. And then from there, Assad would just text me. And Assad had texted me about a lot of major castings that I've made, which will be coming out soon. Mm-hmm. I just can't speak about you them because they're not out yet. Yeah. But... Um, so yeah, I've never met him. He was just texting me. This random person just texting me this do fast casting. So um I just remembered um a couple of weeks later he just messaged me, Oh, hey Whitney, would you like to come to the office? We'll love to meet you, this and that. And I was super hype, you know. And what's crazy is I didn't really know they were such a big agency, you know. I I didn't even know who I was speaking to, you know. Yeah. So um when I got there, we were just talking, and you know what's crazy? I got signed, and I didn't even know I was signed because I had to ask them at the end, you know, like, you know, am I signed, you know? Because just, you know, just of the way they were talking to me, and, um, you know, they showed me mad love, you know, and I really didn't know, so I really questioned them. Am I, you know? Am I, am I with you guys? Yeah, am, am I, I not? with you yeah. guys right now? Or like, what, you know, what's really happening? So from there, they were like, yeah, we, we love your attitude. We love who you are. And That's cool yeah. that they didn't even, that wasn't the first conversation. They were just, you know, he was yeah, giving you like giving opportunities, opportunities, giving, giving, giving to, giving, just, to show yeah. you what we have to offer but, before oh, yeah. even saying like, we want you with us. Oh um, yeah, definitely. Because I think it's that could be great. very, if I was in your shoes and somebody was like approaching me, come sign with us. Why Why should I sign with you? Why should you know, I sign? Yeah, but if and, you're showing me, you know, I'll get you this gig, and, um, I'll get you this gig. I, you know, I actually didn't think twice of it because um, they've been super cool to me. And what's um, what really took my mind, you know, on it was because um, they actually have another Haitian kid okay. and uh, agency. And um, he's super cool. He has a lot of freckles. His name is Soufran, Ralph Soufran. Oh, that's a, um, I love that name. Yeah, um, he actually just did the uh, um, IV Pop campaign for Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, you know, he's super dope out there and everything. So um, from there, I was just like, you know what? Like having two Haitian people in this agency wouldn't hurt, you know? Mm. So um, I just can't wait to see what, you know, like what the two of us brings, you know, with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, so, um, but, um, other than that, um, yeah, um, my agent is super cool. He looks like Aladdin. He looks like Aladdin? Yeah, I just wish Disney casted him. Wow. Because they were looking for an Aladdin. But and they didn't, they didn't pick him? Didn't. <laughs> he couldn't represent himself <laughs> and get him the opportunity? Yeah, yeah, he had that shot, but. Damn. Yeah, but he's super cool. Something else will happen for him, right? <laughs> that's that's what you've said a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> um, you were in the Young Dumb Broke music video, yes. which has 
47 million views. Isn't that crazy? That's I, a I lot think we of were views. Trending. I think we were number one at once on Twitter or something. No, no, not Twitter, YouTube. Wow. Yeah, we, we were trending. I mean, this is a huge year for Khalid. He's oh, yeah. just... Oh, my God, Khalid. Like, he's so humble, let yeah. me tell you. Um, You know, that, um, that set was probably the most amazing set I, you know, I've been on since L.A. because... All the, you know, all the kids and all the people that I've worked with were people that I sort of wanted to work with when I was in Boston. So moving out here. So and you just, knew these people walking into the. Oh, my God. You know, um, actually. Uh, OK, for example, Zoli. I love Zoli. She's such a sweet girl. Um, I remember the, um, when I made Vogue. So the photographer Bree that shot Vogue actually shot with Zoli. And I remember um, talking to Bree and and um, and I remember telling her, yo, I'm going to work with Zoli one day. I don't care. Like, soon enough, watch. And then she's like, Whitney, you got this, you know, things like that. And then um, moving to L.A., you know, like, Zoli's like my sister now. She's really cool and everything. And then, I, you know, I was able to tell her this story, too. And then she was just like, wow, Whitney, like, you know. So it's really dope because, um, yeah, I've known everybody, you know, and just being able to just move out here and being in the pile of greatness and, yeah, it's been a blessing, you know, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And that's a good thing about those opportunities too. You walk into a music video for somebody yeah, and, and all these people are there. Yeah, and you know, I'm I'm always humble. That's the thing. Um, I'm always, you know, um, one thing. I always tell myself the rappers, you know, the singers are amazing and, you know, it's amazing to work with them. But really, um, as a model, as a creator, I really do, um, you know, I really like when I work, I really work with the, you know, like with the director, yeah. you know, I really work with, you know, like with the shooter, with, you know, like with whoever is, you know, producing the actual producing content, the actual, you know, so it's like, um, my vibe really goes out to the directors and, you know, things like that, because, um, you know, it's like, um, you might not know the artist, but once you know the director, the artist knows you. So, um, you know, a lot of, artists I've worked with, I didn't know them. I just knew people from behind the scenes. I just, you know what I mean? So um, from there, I was able to work with them. But, yeah. Um, you you know, it's it's always bringing what you got to work too, you know? So it's like, it's your job. You just got to be the best, you know, at it. So Yeah, that's so cool. And I, it was yeah. cool too because in the actual music video, if people listening haven't seen it, they should go watch it and then come back to this. But you have a, there's a part of you, you, you holding know the sign. Crazy? Saying, Khalid, oh my god most creative uh, i'll tell you this story so um when i first moved out here i was lost very lost and i remember kiki palmer posted a casting online for um her music video and i ended up messaging the director see it's always about the behind the scenes mm -hmm. i messaged the director like you know i just moved to la i would love to be part of this you know i would love to help out you know things like that and then she met, you know, she messaged me back, emailed me, you know, the call sheet, things like that. And I went on set and literally I vibe, like I said, the artists, you let them, you know, do, you know, do what they, you know, like what they're there to do. You know, you let them shine, but you always got to make sure that you get to work with whoever, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, make, talk. make face yeah. with everybody, you know what I mean? So it's like, um, when I was there, um, you, you know, like. Kiki Palmer is an amazing person, dope girl, exactly how she is online, which is what's cool about it. Um, but, you know, I was just behind the scene talking to her mom, you know, I'm just sitting there like <laughs> vibing with her mom and, you know, her mom is such a dope soul too. But, um, you know, at the end, the director came up to me and, you know, she, uh, she was very nice, you know, and um, she ended up telling me her name, you know, things like that. And from there, um, she told me, you know, I have your pictures on, on my call, you know, my, my call sheet. I'll message you anytime. And then from there, you know, we just follow each other on Instagram, always showing love, always, mm -hmm. you know. And then from there, you know, she, you know, she's always sending, you know, she's always sending me love. You know, it's so cool. She reposts my pictures on her Instagram. You know, she's really dope. And then she randomly messaged me about the um, Khalid's video. 
and it wasn't well actually um i almost missed it because it was supposed to happen like a week ago you know be you know like you know like something had happened and i think that's why they canceled it and then somehow she messaged me and then I, you know i got to be part of it oh, but man. but the video was supposed to happen way before though see so you know like god works in you know mysterious ways so it's like i was still able to be part of greatness and that's huge yeah that's a huge and also too that flower in the video i made that i saw so i actually let, when i was doing let the me research, just put that out i, I <laughs> saw that in the um in your post on Instagram about that, that you actually had made that, and then yeah, you you ha like handed like, it to him in the music video. You know, yeah, it you know, it's so cool because that's something that I learned in Haiti. You know, I you know that's why I, you know I always tell people always be yourself and just you know just do you know like you don't gotta fit in. You know, you're not here to fit in. You're here to do what you're here to do, and people will follow along. But at the end of the day, you're not here to like you know to impress anybody. You're not here to you know, so um. Yeah, that's something that my dad taught me. And, you know, in class, you know, it was... Okay, so we went back to high school for this video. So in class, you know, people were just doing papers. You know, just a cool vibe and everything. But me, I'm just me. Like, I'm not going to... I'm going to make a flower. So that's I ended up so making cool. a flower. And then the director seen it. And But somehow, after I made the flower, I gave it to him. And then he was just like, yo, what the hell? Like, how did you make that so fast? Can I make one for you, this and that? And I was just like, yo, I'll teach you, things like that. And then the director seen that, and then he was just like, uh-oh, -uh, we got to catch this in the video. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, we literally, like, re, you know, like, reacted the whole scene. Yeah. And then... Just to get it for the, just for, just for the music it, yeah. video. It was really cool. That is so cool. <laughs> Even just for that three second just clip. Just for that three second, yeah. But that's... it makes all the difference. And um, and the girl, you know what's crazy? The girl that was in front of me that I was speaking to before I turned my head was Zoli. Wow. See, it it all comes together, you know? Like, it, yeah, it's like a puzzle, like I said, y'all, you know, like you only got to put the pieces together and, you know? You just have to figure out how they fit. Yeah, how they fit. It's never easy to do so, though. Yeah. How was the shoot with Halsey? You guys shot, it was uh, Bad at Love. Bad at that Love. one's at 14 million. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean You're out here just so far, on, like... on the million view count. <laughs> But that one was pretty cool. You guys were on the middle of a desert. You guys were in the drop top Cadillac from like 69 oh, orange Cadillac. Oh, it was pretty awesome. You know why? Because I told her on set, I was like, you know what, I'll see. I used to drive a cab in, in Boston. And she's like, well, wouldn't he? Now you're driving a Cadillac. So <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you. And I'm just like, you know what? Like this, you know, you know, she's, oh my God, she's so dope. She's only 22. Oh, she's young. Yeah, she's very young, and um, most people don't think that because of how she is. You know, she has such a grown woman attitude, mm -hmm. and that's you know that's dope. But um, she's very young, very talented, and all her visuals are you know all her visuals. You know, she usually gets with the director and and puts everything together. You know, so it's like that's why it was really dope working with her because all my visuals are my visuals. You know, so just working with someone that you know that just had a vision and you know. And um, I just had to play along. You know, it was really cool. So, um, and set was super awesome. We were in the desert for like two days. Yeah. We got, you know, it felt like a movie because I really had to act everything out, you know. And um, we had to fight the cops. We had to, you know, um, drive the car and everything. We had to do so much. And, um, it, you know, that video really felt like a movie. Yeah. So, it was painting a picture as you watched it. It was oh my god! It was so um, it was so dope. That's probably one like one video that I couldn't wait to come out because I was really driving that car, and you know just vibing out with my girls and you know like that video was girl power. Yeah. I don't know. If oh, you, absolutely! You know, like, I felt it one hundred percent watching was, that video. Oh my god! Because um, so basically, um, her album is fire. I don't know if you know the um, the story behind her. Okay, mm -hmm. so long story short, her album is oh my god. Okay, so the um, director, the first director of Romeo and um, Juliet, mm -hmm. is actually the person that sat down with her and helped her bring her album together in a way. Wow. So I'm like, so that alone was just crazy to me, you know, because it's like what you know what's what's happening here, you know. So um, from there, I was just like, holy shit, that's, you know, that's amazing. But you know how um, 
Juliet is sort of always running after Romeo. You know, it's like they're lovers, mm -hmm. things like that. But with her, um, after everything that had happened with the lover, she couldn't choose him. So she, she chose herself. So when she chose herself, um, she ended up moving. You know, the cops were looking after her and things like that. And then um, from there, she ended up um, moving in, into our town, which was my town and my girl's town. So when she moved and things like that, um, we just wasn't taking it. We, you know, like we weren't having it. But as time went by, you know, like we, you know, like we kind of understood, you know, what was going on because we kind of went to the same thing she went to, mm -hmm. and, you know, and we didn't, you know, choose the lovers. We chose ourselves. So the fact that she was going to the same thing, we just, you know, took her in and yeah. Awesome. So it, it was all about girls power. Yeah. So, you know. Fuck the bullshit. <laughs> we choose ourselves yeah. and that's it. So. You got to fall in love with yourself before you can fall in love oh, with yeah, anyone else. Definitely. You yeah. have to invest the time into yourself. Your look is very unique. You, you have the, oh, the, thank the, you. the hair, the everything. When, you, when people come across, whether it's a picture of you, whether you're in a music video, is there something you want them to feel? Um, like, are you representing something for yourself? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. Um. You know, when I come on set or, or wherever I go, you know, it doesn't matter if it's work or, or down the street. I could go up the street. I could, you know, you could find me in the bus and I'm the most fanciest yeah. human. I don't care because yeah. at the end of the day, it's like you have to, you know, like represent yourself in the most, you know, like amazing way because you never know who you meet, you mm -hmm. know. You could meet the most amazing person at the bus stop. Yeah. You don't know. Like, you know, um, you know, um, I know this one model. She got signed at a bus stop. Let me tell you. At know? a bus stop. Slick Woods. Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely love Slick Woods. And, and what's crazy is when I made Yeezy season four, when I walked upstairs and met Kanye, and I walked in the room that, you know, that they assigned me. And I went in and I sat down. And um, you know when you walk in a room and you don't really look around until you sit down and that's when you're like, oh, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, when I looked around, Slick Woods was sitting next to me. So I was just like, what's going on, yo? So, you know? And um, it's pretty cool because um, I try to understand, you know, other models' perspective. I try to understand, you know, things like that because... I, you know, like, you know, me, myself, I am one. So, um, you know, so it's like, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's really all about the vibes. It's really all about how you represent yourself because you don't want to be like the other one. You, you don't want to give, you know, the world something that, you know, someone already gave. You mm -hmm. don't want to, you know what I mean? Like you always got to be yourself. You always got to, um, do what's best for you. And, um, also too, it's like, there's, you know, there's so many beautiful models out here and there's so many beautiful people out here. And um and and I truly feel like um in order to like, you know, to be seen or to be noticed, you really gotta like have that that one you know, that one look where it's like, Okay, that's her, you know? So, um I feel like my fro is um is my go to because I just wake up and I have my fro, you know. And um that's something, you know, like my fro really defines me because, um, you know, I, I fight with my fro, you know, like I, you know, when I want to comb it, it's, you know, it, it it's a lot, you know, it, <laughs> it's it, a process, you know, it's a struggle. Yeah. So, um, so it's like, I, I don't go through bullshit with anything else the way that I go, you know, with my hair. So it's like at the end of the day, it, you know, it's really something that, you know, that's, growing with me so as i grow i feel like by the time i'm 30 my hair is gonna be like the <laughs> you know like, like a tree so because yeah. you know it will leave you know it's it's growing you yeah. know so and i you know and i truly feel like um it gives a really dope vibe too because um you know um i love getting compliments you know i love giving you know a, a lot of cute compliments from different people and um and not because it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I got to get compliments. But it's because it really shows me that I'm giving, you know, such a bright light into the world. Mm -hmm. So if I'm walking down the street and um, this person, you know, sees me and, you know, tells me this beautiful, you know, like compliment. Like, you know, what I mean, it's like I'm really giving out something that, you know, that's really bright. So, um, you know, I'm just yeah, I'm, I'm just out here living, you know, mm -hmm. I just live life and 
I, you know, I give the world what I would like to receive. Yep. And um, I just, like I said, I keep it moving. And I just. Yeah. I think that's smart. You just mind your business. Mind my business. Be a positive it, energy person yeah, where and you're. Just do me, you you're know? just making your moves. Yeah. I'm and the, I'm, you know, and, and I'm also young too. And, and that's something that I always got to remember. I'm young. And um and not every life fit, you know, yeah. not every lifestyle, not everything that I fit into. So it's like, I might be doing what I'm doing, and I might be into the things that I'm into. But at the end of the day, doesn't mean that I can just be in that room or I can be in this room because I am young, you know. So it's like, um, yeah, I I do keep it, you know, low key PG and all things mm-hmm. like that because. Um, one thing that I always tell myself is if my father can look at it online and smile, then I'm happy. But if he can look at it and tell me, Whitney, what the hell is this? Then I know I shouldn't be doing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, like I said, representation is something that takes you a long way. So, um, just because you're free or just because you this or that doesn't mean you have to represent yourself in such a, you know, like an awful way or things like that, because, you know, it, you know your life matters you know yeah. things like that like your um reputation matters and you always want to keep that good luck and yeah you have to hold you have to keep you have to be accountable for your actions oh, and yeah, you definitely. don't want to put something out to that you look that, back on yeah. and you regret because you regret because there's no going know, back at that because point because you wasn't thinking twice yeah. you know so but also too i always tell people that's something that um if anybody didn't take anything from this take this um you know, you cannot solve your problems um, with the same um, thinking you had, you know, with the same um, mindset mindset that you had. Mm-hmm. You know, you really have to switch it up in order to get, you know, different results. So, um, yeah, so don't, yeah, just if it didn't work this way, try it, you know, another way. And, yeah. Do you, do you think, let me take it back. Should people aim their goals to be, something they know they can achieve or should they aim, should they aim their goals to be something that seems impossible um you know i always think you, you know how they say the sky's the limit mm-hmm. i always think there's there's really no limit you do like because i did a day like we don't even know if that if the, the you know it's like people yeah. say this but it's like come on like yeah. we know where's the limit at you know yeah. what i mean so it's like you just push yourself because i didn't like myself um i started as little whitney taking pictures in worcester and mm-hmm. you know it's like now i'm doing like i've been in la for like what eight months and i've been in like 10 videos you know just things like that so it's like you you might think you 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 know you only doing this little much but it could be taking you different places you know because modeling definitely has taken me a lot of different places so it's like um you know there's you know there's really no limit if you can be an actress you can be a model you can you know be whoever you gotta be and just you know be the best at it then you bring yourself out you know what i mean so um, and also to, um, anything you want to do is possible. You know what I mean? And I'm not just saying that, oh yeah, like everything, nah, if you want it, you can definitely get it because I didn't, you know, like I'm still living my life and I'm still, um, living this dream that, you know, but, um, at the end of the day, it's like, I just know if I want to work with somebody, I wake up and I'll work with somebody, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I'll definitely work with that person. So, um, you shouldn't really, um, you know, box yourself in a way. Um, you just gotta just, you know, just be open and just have different options and have different routes because I don't know, like, you know how sometimes they say, oh, stay in your lane. I, I mean, I say that too, but sometimes you really gotta take different lanes because sometimes, you know, that one lane could take forever when you can really just take a little yeah you, you have know? to adjust and see yeah is this working what's this not working yeah. try this stay in your lane of ignore of, yeah. what everything around yeah. you but, but still, still be still, ready yeah. to like move around and try Definitely, to figure out yeah. what what works for you if you could solve any problem in the world what would it be and why any problems in the world one problem one problem i'll solve um hunger yeah yeah hunger because i say hunger because i think with everything else going on you know for example racism things like that 
those are things that we can fix you know like we we can definitely fix um being nicer to each other we can Mm -hmm. definitely you know fix a lot of things by just starting with ourselves but um hunger i feel like it's so much bigger because um you know when we think of hunger it's not just oh yeah um you know kids down the streets are hungry or like you know like people down the streets are homeless nah it's the whole world you know what i mean it's like every country somebody's starving somebody's dying you know what i mean so things like that like um you know yeah if i could solve one thing it'll be hunger yeah. because that's like the, b- the every, bare minimum yeah you solve that and you can fix everything yeah on because top of with it. me everybody eats you know mm-hmm. so it's like even my team even people that works with me if i eat you eat if i have two dollars you have two dollars you know what i mean so definitely yeah yeah do you think there's a perfect I mean, regardless of industry or career path, do you think there is a perfect formula for success? Um, I think success um, begins with yourself. And I think um, if, you know, if you're out here to be successful, um, you know, it, it really takes you. You know what I mean? It's like, like you, know, it, you know, it's you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you got to get up and you got to really, like, go about how you want to be successful, you know what I mean? So it's like, I just, um, yeah, success begins with whoever wants it, you know what I mean? So it's like me, I definitely want that lifestyle, you know, I definitely want to be um, the the best to ever do it, you know, I, shit, I, I, you know, I always tell myself, you know, people um, usually tell me I look like Naomi Campbell, she's amazing, Naomi Campbell is the best to ever, to, you know, to ever, you know, like to do it and stuff, so it's like, you know, she's, she's a legend. She's, yeah. shout out to Naomi Campbell. <laughs> what the hell? Like, I, I can't believe that I'm speaking on Naomi Campbell right yeah. now. Like, what the hell, you know? But I always tell myself, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it better than anybody else. You ever, have to you have know? that mentality. Always. You have you know? to have that so. mentality. Before I get into the closing questions, this is when I reverse the role. I allow my guests to ask me any one question. It could be about something we talked about today, something you want to know about me. Any one question, you have the floor. All right. Okay. So what triggered you to do this interview with me? What triggered me? So like I said, we we followed each other. I can't remember when, but it was months ago. Um, we had just kind of followed each other and got out to LA. But before I even got to LA, I don't rem- I can't recall what the post was, but you had posted a photo and the caption had caught me because you it seems I like I like your content because it's not you don't just post photos and like leave some like comment you kind of spread knowledge oh, yeah, uh, with with the with your posts uh, and there was one that you that you had posted and it caught my attention I was like she really gets it like she's she's not somebody that's here that is just posting pictures for a like oh, thank you. or um, oh no I do not there's do it for like. but there are people that just post pictures and I see the post and I'm like you're just looking for a like or it's mm. there's no purpose to the post and i appreciate when i see people that are actually trying to put out content for whatever whether you're modeling whether yeah. a podcast whether you're a music artist like have a purpose right yeah, have definitely. a purpose of what you're posting into the world because it's similar to like you said when you're walking down the street you want to give off that energy when yeah. i'm scrolling through my feed i want <laughs> to i want to feel, feel like the energy. energy and i felt it and i was like yo <laughs> she you. gets it like she gets it and it was just a little moment like that where I was like, I, I want her on the podcast. Now it's just a matter of timing. I knew I was coming out to LA at some point. Um, so that to me was just a matter of just waiting. Just wait for when it's right. That's um, and I got out here like nine, ten days ago. Five. Had to go through the headache of like oh my God, getting this table, <laughs> getting this little plan, this poster, <laughs> setting everything up. And finally, when I was able to like sit down, I was like, okay, now we're back in back, back in motion. Business. I had to like put this on pause for a couple of weeks just to get myself out here. Um, and then I was like, all right, like now it's time to get this ball rolling. And I was like, I'm just gonna start hitting people up. And that's when I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna hit hit up Whitney and see what she thinks about it. Um, but and, I'm glad you did. Yeah. You know, you know like. You know, I've been shouting out people in my interview, but shout out to us, though, for real, because yeah. from the East Coast, Boston, all, yeah. you know, all the way to L.A. and doing this and, you know, really, um, you know, just working out here and just, you know. I, I, I really, you know, what's funny is um, this whole move, 
just recently I've been talking to people and they're like, Oh, you're coming, you went from the East to the West coast. Like that's like, that takes balls. Like you, you can't just do that. Or, you know, I've seen just even just a couple people chime in and, and say like, Oh, this is awesome. Like you're following your dreams. And, um, <clears throat> it's weird because I felt so comfortable when I got here. And I don't know if it was because I moved out here with one of my best friends. I don't know if it's because I've been out to LA twice this year and I have some friends that live in the area. But I felt so comfortable. Like I, I knew that I had made the right decision. The right decision Dri- I drove out here, drove cross country. Oh, I, I did a road. Oh it was unbelievable. I did a road trip the with views. amazing. Oh, see, that's what I need. And the entire drive out here, I was so anxious to get here, but I also knew that there was no regret. You know what I mean? It was it was like a bittersweet drive oh, because yeah. you, you could just hop on a plane and get here in six hours and you're in LA. It took us seven days to get out of here. So it's like seven days of really, I mean, it's like we did like 4,200 miles. So we were, on, we were driving yeah. a lot and it was a time to really think about like what was happening. Like That's I crazy. had dreamed of living out here since I was in like fifth grade. Uh, it was such a like moment for me to like, think about life and yeah. just like what what am i really about to do right now do like right i'm really now. about to be living in and la the, like yeah. in the mix of everything and just even driving around it's like it's beautiful i think it's gonna take me quite some time before you know everyone of course complains about the traffic out here <laughs> and i'm just like you know what i'm happy i'm yeah, just happy to I'm, be here i'm, I'm just grateful <laughs> i'm very grateful the sun is shining this every sun, day of yeah, the week this palm tree yeah like, what the hell? that's why it's like i just roll around and i'm like this is yeah. I don't know how else to put it in words. Like I, I it trips me out. You know what though? Um, LA gave me the feel of when I was coming from Haiti. Yeah. You know, it was just like okay, damn. Something, you know? something's, something's happening. When I got off the plane, it was just like wow, I'm really here. You know, cause I've never been here yeah. before. So, um, you know, I've always seen LA on TV. Don't get me wrong, you know, but it's like, yeah, LA's always. You don't been. know until you actually get here. Until you they, get here. Of course, they glamorize it on <laughs> TV. They just show you like <laughs> Beverly Hills, Hollywood, like you know? houses <laughs> in the hills. Everyone thinks you're like living up there. Yeah. Like, nah, nah. Comes down on yeah, LA. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole different world over there. It's a whole different but world over there. It's definitely, um, you know, it's definitely a place that you can build if you really want to build something. So, um, I'm glad I took that jump and, um, it, you know, it feels like home and I don't see myself back in Worcester anytime soon. So yeah, you just have to roll with what, what gonna, makes sense. I mean, when I have my billboard, I'll go back. Yeah. I like that. You know, and you have the billboard right on Sunset Boulevard. No, actually, no. When I have my billboard on the, um, which highway is that in Worcester? Mass it, Pike, the main one is the main 90 one. West. It's the main one because my mother literally drives there yeah. every day. Yeah. So you want to have yeah, your I face up there for her. Hell yeah. Closing questions. Um, picture frame on the wall. I want you to imagine this a picture frame right here. Imaginary picture frame. Okay. You're in it mm-hmm. 10 years from now. What and who do we see within that picture frame? Um, I mean, me, of course, but I'll be on the cover of Vanity Fair. Okay. Yeah. You're going to be on the cover. Oh, yeah. When it, you know, that's, um, you know, yes, Vanity Fair. Because, you know, Vogue, I love Vogue. I love everything. I love, you know, all the platforms. But Vanity Fair is really, like, you got to be a legend to hit Vanity Fair. You really got to be on some, like, timber and level. Or, like, you really got to be, you know, um, Morgan Freeman, you know? Yeah. That's so, a that's a whole level up. You you really gotta be Naomi Campbell and things like that. I like that. And um, you know, um, v- um, Vanity Fair usually um shoots you know, um, sports legend. You know, like um, for example, they just did a shoot with um, Serena Williams, mm-hmm. and it was amazing. You yeah. Know? So it's like, yeah, Vanity Fair is, yeah, the goal. So You'll 10 get there. years from now. You'll get there. Where can people find you on social media if they don't already follow you? Um, well, on Instagram. Pl- no, please follow me on Instagram. Um, Twitter and Facebook, things like that. I don't really, you know. But um, Instagram is really important to me because I really drop a lot of content and things like that. But my ad name is Whitney Bazile, and that's W-I-D-N-Y-B-A-Z-I-L-E. That's Whitney Bazile, W-I-D-N-Y-B-A-Z-I-L-E. Love yeah. it. Oh, 
And well, I mean, if you guys want to follow um, follow me on Twitter too, it's call me top boss. Like call what? me. Call me what? Top boss. Okay. So it's C A L L M E T O P B O S S. It's baller. Call me top boss. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Last question for you. Somebody that's listening in doesn't know what their passion is, doesn't know what their purpose is. What two to three pieces of advice would you give to them to finding that purpose? Um. The first advice, I'll say, um, love yourself. Definitely find who you are and, um, you know, find, um, you know, like find the little pieces that you can put together, you know, and, you know, in order to, you know, like really put yourself together. The second one, I'll really say, um, you really got to drop so much, you know, um, sometimes you really got to drop a lifestyle. You got to drop friendships. You got to drop you know, anything, a car, a home, you know, just to move, just to, you know, be somewhere that's better, you know, um, just do it. You know I mean? It's like, if, you know, it might seem hard at the beginning, you know, taking that jump, but it'll definitely be brighter on the other side. And another third, well, the third reason, um, well, the third, um, example I'll give, well, not an example, but, um, I'll just say to just, um, literally once you make that move or like once you put yourself in that position just literally say fuck everything you know like like um the one thing you really gotta like investigate you gotta find out who's doing what what's happening things like that you gotta put yourself in rooms where you know like the greatest are in because once you're in a room where you know like millionaires are in Ten years from now, you could be one to yourself. So at the end of the day, you always got to um, put yourself in, you know, places that will um, not only, um, you know, well, not only will you meet people, but it'll, you know, definitely bring you um, way higher than, you know what I mean? Because it's like you could meet one person and that person really connects you with something way bigger than you could ever thought of. So, um, yeah, just um, just really go after everything that you want. Um, you know, don't think of the money issue because at the end of the day, you will get the money back. You know, if you really have the talent, if you really have, you know, like the things that you need and you, you know, you go after them, trust me, just, you know, just get a job on the side, you know, things like that. But always make sure you're not working for that person. You know, you always want to work for yourself. So, um, yeah, always have that mentality. You know, I'm working for myself and that's it. Yeah. That's well said. And keep it moving. And keep it moving. Yeah. Winnie Bazil, thank you for coming on the podcast. Of course, anytime, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. If you could leave a one sentence review in the comment section below about what you'd like, what you'd like to see in the future, that would be awesome. And if you really want to make me happy, please subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date when Bob Bay drops a new video. We'll catch you guys next time.